If you were driving from Los Angeles to Salt Lake City on U.S. Highway 91, you'd pass through St. George, Utah, population 4,562, just a short way from the state line of Nevada. It's pre-dawn, five in the morning. Pretty deserted at this hour. Everything is closed down, everyone's asleep. Everyone, that is, except a milkman. Been delivering over the same route for 12 years. Never missed a day. And a police officer patrols the lonely downtown beat. And another night owl keeps his place open 24 hours for tourists coming through. Since the rest of the town was sound asleep, only our night owl saw it, that great flash in the western sky. An atomic bomb at the Nevada test site 140 miles to the west. But it's old stuff to St. George. Routine. They've seen a lot of them ever since 1951. Nothing to get excited about anymore. As this thriving community went about its business, youngsters on their way to school, housewives starting on the chores of the day, merchants opening their doors, and the folks at home listening to the radio program. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you important news. Word has just been received from the Atomic Energy Commission that due to a change in wind direction, the residue from this morning's atomic detonation is drifting in the direction of St. George. It is suggested that everyone remain indoors for one hour or until further notice. There is no danger. This is simply routine Atomic Energy Commission safety procedure. To prevent unnecessary exposure to radiation, it is better to take cover during this period. Parents need not be alarmed about children at school. No recesses outdoors will be permitted. Please stay indoors and advise your friends and neighbors who may not hear this announcement to do likewise. And as the people at St. George took cover, it was natural that some of them had questions about atomic tests. Questions like, why do we have to test bombs? And the answers are found in still another question, the question of national survival. For testing of atomic weapons goes on for a vital reason, our national defense. We have no choice. To fall behind any other nation in atomic progress is a national risk. To assure our defense, we have to keep our atomic strength at top level by testing new ideas and principles and applying these principles in weapons. That's why we have the Nevada test site. It's sort of a backyard workshop, the most unusual scientific workshop in the world. 640 square miles of desert and mountains, 65 miles northwest from Las Vegas, set in some of the loneliest acres the world has ever seen. But this barren region is not barren of brains. Some of the outstanding minds of the nation work in this sprawling outdoor laboratory. The scientists who have harnessed this great force and opened the door to the atomic age the military men who may have to apply this force in the defense of our nation, technicians who assemble the complex instruments and equipment, and lots of others who build, who plan, who record, who maintain security, and the countless tasks essential to this important project. These men are here for a vital purpose. Since we have no atomic monopoly, we must continue to increase our knowledge of atomic weapons to guarantee maximum military atomic strength. But naturally, the folks in St. George, as they look upon their silent city, wonder why weapons are tested inside the United States instead of the far Pacific area. The answer is, we need both testing areas. In the vast, isolated reaches of the mid-Pacific, we test weapons of tremendous strength. Only smaller bombs are tested inside the United States. These smaller devices, just as important to America's weapons strength as the larger ones, 
could not be tested so quickly if they had to be taken to the Pacific Proving Ground about 5,000 miles from our western coast. A Pacific test is quite a job. Past operations out there involved 9,000 men, like two complete cities of St. George, and food and supplies to maintain those men. Obviously, an operation like this takes time, months and months of time, while atomic progress waits. So our need is pressing for a nearby test site, a place where nuclear tests can be made frequently, quickly, and more economically. And thus, in 1951, the Nevada test site was set up for the first in a series of continental tests that are part of our continuing atomic program. Because the Nevada test site is close in, scientists conduct a test on one day and return to their laboratories on the next to start evaluating results immediately. This greatly speeds up our weapons development program. Those problems that cannot be solved in a laboratory are taken to the outdoor workshop in Nevada. This is called Ground Zero. Around this center point of the explosion are located instruments and equipment that are part of diagnostic experimentation, which is scientific language, meaning, well, what happened? Did the idea work? And as you might expect, there are some humdingers in the way of gadgets. Some we cannot describe for security's sake. Some we can mention, like the high-speed camera that takes pictures at one three millionth of a second, or the instruments that measure heat in millions of degrees and the light intensity hundreds of times brighter than the sun. Scientists must know exactly what occurs before, during, and after a nuclear explosion. While most field tests are held largely to answer the questions of the scientists, these tests are also designed to answer as many other questions as possible. The armed forces, for instance, they've got to know. Military scientists conduct experiments to record and evaluate effects of atomic weapons. For training purposes, military personnel observe from foxholes. We also need to know if military equipment can take it. All types are positioned at varying distances from ground zero. Structures also play an important part, not only in military studies, but also in civil defense programs to determine blast and heat effects. Family-type dwellings are constructed right on the site. Civil defense is also concerned with the value of automobiles as shelters in an atomic attack. Biomedical tests, using animals such as mice and pigs for research subjects, are conducted to gain important information about radiation effects on cells and tissue. And a lot of other government agencies also set up special tests and experiments. Finally, the work is done. Preparations are completed. Another valuable test is ready. Shot day is tomorrow morning. The early morning air is cool, crisp. The outdoor laboratory workshop is deserted, silent. 